Hello everybody, welcome back to ESPN's Football Forecast and it doesn't get juicier than this. Arsenal versus Bayern Munich, Nabade and Kim join me to talk through all of the big talking points this week when it comes to football. And there are loads, so let's not mess about. Now Arsenal come into this game in fine form, three clean sheets in the last three games, Man City, Luton and Brighton and have only conceded 1.89 XG combined across those three matches. Um, and they've also been in good form down the other end, 3.39 XG against, uh, created against Brighton alone, which could have been a stumbling block. Nabade, let me come to you first, because we've spoken a lot about when you get to this point of the season and you are in the Champions League and you are up against Man City mm -hmm. as well. There's a lot swirling in the minds of the players and with the fans and we're all excited about it as well. Going into this game, so much narrative before we even get into Harry Kane. But for Arsenal, they're in a really, really strong position now in the league. And they would just want to keep that going, going into this game against a Bayern Munich side where they're in a horrible place right now. It's, it's a massive opportunity for them. Yeah, it? it's the best time to play Bayern. I was with an Arsenal fan a couple of days ago and I said, Bayern have got loads of injuries. And he was like, whenever Arsenal are close to anything, why do people say they've got injuries or <laughs> like we've got the highest this and highest that? Like, and I was like, relax, I'm saying it's a good thing. I'm saying it's good for you guys. Right. Um, we've spoken about the psychological side of this in a, in, a, in a different way. And I think Arsenal have gone top. And for the first time, people are saying they're going to win the league. And probably for the first time, people are going, well, you know what? Bayern aren't great. They'll beat Bayern. And because they shut City out, people are going, they could draw City. They'll shut them out. And suddenly, now people are going, they're the best team in the world. <laughs> now they're into a different realm of conversation from where we were before. And as for Bayern, they're in terrible form. Uh, Leverkusen, kudos to them. They've been unbelievable. Uh, but on under Thomas Tuchel, they, they don't... Like, we were speak, speaking about their starting 11. We've got to start him here and start him there. When have we ever thought about buying like that? You often almost go, there's your 11 players, this is what they do. Yeah, and they also generally step into these games with the league kind of wrapped up. And I mean, the league is wrapped up, I guess, this, yeah. this time. <laughs> but I think the big thing for me going into this game is buying. Thomas Tuchel, there is no buying there anymore. And you can see it with the results at the weekend. Um, and, and the league position as well. That said, for Bayern, who are the big players for you? Because there's a certain Englishman in there who's been doing a reconnaissance mission over the whole season just to get himself ready for the Euros to win that, <laughs> who is in fine form. Um, how much is it on his shoulders? Which, again, sounds mad when you think about Bayern Munich against Arsenal. Over the years, Bayern Munich have toyed with Arsenal, haven't they? Yeah, now we're just talking about Harry Kane as kind of being their saviour in this game. And is Harry <laughs> Kane, to is Harry Kane the Spurs legend, going to be the only man who can <laughs> save Arsenal from doing the double? Well, Eric Dyer's there as well. So there's yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, that worries me, right? Let's not talk about that. But yeah, I mean, they've got some good players, haven't they? They've got Sane, Musiala, Kimmich, fantastic players. Thomas Muller's been there, done that. Neuer's back in net after however long of like the last half of last season and first half of this season out injured. So they've still got that quality there. I think what they've done with Thomas Tuchel and announcing his departure before the end of the season is an incredibly odd thing to do. No matter what is going on behind the scenes or what's being said in the press or where you are in the league position, you don't sack a manager um, like before the end of the season yeah. because they've still got the Champions League, which they're pretty good at, they're pretty experienced at. They've got like Champions League winning players in that side. And they've kind of like thrown away the season. And obviously, OK, the, the decision has now been made to look like a good decision because he's managing a team. Worse. It's got yeah. even worse because he's managing a team that he knows he's not going to be at anymore. Mm. So was, I think that was a very, very odd thing to do. I think the only thing that Bayern will feel slightly confident about is the fact that Bayern as a club have this Champions League winning experience and mentality. And they have players who have been there and have done it, whereas Arsenal don't per se. But I think if you're looking on form and you're looking at the players who are on the pitch and the teams that are on the pitch and the way they're playing, Arsenal are massive, massive favourites for this one. Crazy, isn't it? That's crazy. Absolutely. Which how is a, which how is a narrative moves yeah. through no, but, no, but it's crazy, but you, can't, you kind of can't really say it's not true. I mean, look at how Arsenal are playing at the moment, the amount of goals that they're scoring. And look at Bayern, they can't seem to, you know, well, thread keep a lead, five passes basically. together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and obviously a horrific away result in their last game. <laughs> Going forward, they've still got great players. And I think it's fair enough for us to reflect and um, allow the form of both these teams to sort of uh, be held in high regard because I think you step into these big games and I guess you can wash away a certain amount but at the same time you kind of need momentum and these games are going to be hectic. The atmosphere at Emirates is going to be amazing as well. In terms of an away performance that they can take back for that second leg, how important is Kimmich in this game? Because he's been playing at right back, 
He's having 90 to 100 touches, 120 touches per game. So he's still the metronome, but in a very different position. Is it smart for him to be out there, or is that a massive loss not having him in the middle? They've sort of been moving, sort of flirting with both things this season. They've played him in the middle at times, and they've shifted him to right back. Obviously, Pavard's injury has impacted them because they actually play through him because he's technically so good. Yep. But I don't think Pavard's best suited in this fixture. So even if he was fit, I wouldn't have played him. masraoui has been out of form. And I think when I look at this, I don't know if you agree, but I look at that midfield area and I go... We're going to lose that anyway. Because Conrad Lima, Goretzka and Kimmich are not going to win in the midfield battle against Jorginho, Rice and Erdegaard. Not technically and probably not physically either. And so I go, let's forget about that. Let's play our best player in a position where we can get him on the ball and not have him doing doggies in midfield. Because that's what Tuchel has had him doing when he's played in midfield this season. Get your most technical individual, the, your smartest player, I'd say, in a position where you can get the ball and try and dictate the game whenever you have the ball. Mm-hmm. That's why I'd keep Kimmich out right back. Because Arsenal will win that midfield battle. It's that That's how they win. They, they'll win the central battle, actually. Not the midfield battle, the central battle with that sort of Saliba, Gabriel, Rice triangle with the others around there. So I think scrap that, play out wide. That's the only way to get at Arsenal. Because I, I guess I get what you're saying. Because I think actually the dangerous thing in build-up is... Odegaard out of possession and, and Arsenal in general out of possession I think are one of the best teams in Europe mm. but again especially in that sort of that area of the pitch where Odegaard can get at you as a midfielder trying to get on the ball I think you're right because I think unless it's Kimmich there's you know when any game of football you go through you go over you go round don't go through because mm. Odegaard and that whole team you know even against Man City twice this season they've been able to stop those teams and I think that's why a lot of people think that Arsenal can go a long way because they can stop the opposition as much as anything else you know in the Brighton game the last 15 minutes Arteta actually had them sat back in a mid block and he was actually saying like let's suffer and I was sat there going this is madness like they're so confident in their defensive qualities that they were saying to Brighton who are probably one of the best teams at playing in the little pockets try and play for us mm-hmm. and it was going into the pockets and coming straight back out and I, I look at that and I go that is that is a Champions League recipe right there I was, I was trying to think how you were going to hurt them offensively and I think it, it is getting the ball to Harry Kane I think you you know if we know that Kimmich is going to have 120 touches Arteta knows that as well and so there will be a plan for that and so that might again in a different way make it easier for them to to stop them and stop the ball going into Harry Kane because I think if Harry Kane can get on the ball in awkward areas that could suck forward the the, the centre-backs a little bit and if you've got those runners in behind they do have that pace that could be where Musiala could get involved a little bit from the other side of it Arsenal do they need to win this one because it's at home it's interesting because we're talking about the kind of narrative shifting and we're talking about Arsenal now as completely differently than we were maybe a few months ago I think Arsenal will feel like they have to win this one it's at home there are no Bayern fans at all which will you know, make a little bit of a difference I would say and I think the, the thing about the narrative is for me I think that Bayern will have to go and frustrate Arsenal mm. I think that's the only way they're going to get any result is they're going to have to cut off the passing lanes they're going to have to drop deeper they're going to have to not allow space in behind because I mean I remember last year in the Champions League quarter final against Manchester City mm. it was Haaland and I believe Bernardo Silva who came up and isolated Upamecano and every single time he got skinned now that can't be allowed to happen with Saka or Martinelli or Gabriel Jesus because they will suffer so I think for Bayern Munich they'll they'll need to sit back and they'll need to really really frustrate and stifle Arsenal and I think for Arsenal the way that they have been playing and the way that they know how to play is the way that they're going to have to go forward they're just going to have to be confident and not let the occasion take hold of them they've done that so fantastically particularly this year I know in their mind, I would imagine that there'll be some sort of psychological element thinking we're playing against a Champions League winning team only from a few years ago. We haven't been in this position for a long time. That will play on their mind. But if they just play their game, I think this Bayern team is very get out of ball. I, I wonder how much the narrative changes if Bayern score first. Because at the moment, the whole thing is about Arsenal don't concede goals. If Kane scores, it's 1-0. Tuchel is a monster in, in one-off games. Sit in, soak up. How are you going to react now? Yeah, game state's going to be huge in yeah. this one. And that's it again. I think the thing, the question mark I'll always have about Arsenal, which it sounds really unfair, is is scoring goals in open play against really good teams. Yeah. Um, mm. But I think if you, the greatest plaster for that is the set pieces and how good they are with that. So I wouldn't be surprised if some goals came from that um, as well. And I do think this is a huge game for Odegaard. And actually the two wide players as well. There's a lot of goals against Bayern Munich have come from cutbacks and, and being able to hurt... Uh, teams in, in the 
in the wide areas. And Martinelli up against Kimmich, who they're going to look to get involved with. He's probably not got the pay, same pace as Martinelli. And we know what Martinelli does. I think they've been very careful with Martinelli as well in recent games because they want him for this one. Got to finish with Harry Kane. Has to score, doesn't he? Yeah, he That's about everything yeah. we said. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll score, right? Yeah, yeah. He has to. But... And, but I feel the, so the sorry. The storm man. that's coming yeah. his way, right? Oh, no. Win or lose. I know he's probably not bothered and it's definitely one of those ones. I have it with videos. You go, I'm not going to look at the comments on this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And for him, it's like, do not go on social media after this one if you, if you don't make it through. Do you think, uh, you know, I guess we can revisit the predictions overall when it comes to the tie. How do you think this game will finish and, and who do you think will make it through the tie? I mean, on Harry Kane, he has to score. Like, and... Ari, switch off all your social medias, brother. <laughs> it's going to get rough out there. He's been so unlucky this season, but he's the key. But like, it'll be glorious if you get... You know, oh, 100 really like, If he right? manages to drag Bayern through, yeah. unbelievable. Um, I think Arsenal win the tie. I think they'll win the home game, probably 2-1. And I think they'll do that mid-block and play on the counter away from home. And Bayern, Bayern are just so susceptible on the counter. So I think Arsenal win it overall. I think Arsenal definitely win the first game. I'm not sure if they'll win the tie overall. I know Allianz Arena is an incredibly difficult place to go. As I talked about the experience and the psychology of being in those latter stages, whilst also being at the top of the Premier League, might impact Arsenal. I wouldn't be surprised at all. I think they'll win the first leg. I'd, I'm not sure they'll go through. I'm not sure they'll be really? in the semi-final. So a couple of weeks ago, I said I said Bayern, um, and I'm not. I, I'm really. I think it's going to go. It's, it's going to be so tight. I don't think Arsenal win this one. Because I think there's a lot to be learnt from the game. And there could be moments where they could hurt them. And you've got someone like Harry Kane who can take his chances, which he's done all season. But I think they'll get so much information from that first game. I think in the second leg, that's where they might actually beat them. So to safeguard myself after already saying Bayern will make it through, <laughs> I can put that clip to one side and use this clip and say, Arsenal are definitely going through. Well, yeah, I think the form thing is a big thing here. And I think actually Arsenal will go away and I think they'll beat them. Uh, away from home. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below.